So in this lesson, we're going to look at the shape interface. And we're going to use the shape interface. We're going to implement it in the circle class and in the rectangle class. So this is the shape interface. Remember, an interface is not a class. So the kind of interfaces that we're going to be creating just don't have state or behavior. All they have are method signatures. An interface is a contract. It's a contract which says that any class that implements this interface must also implement these methods. Now remember a signature is composed of a return type, a name, and a parameter list. It makes sense to make all of these particular methods public in this case. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven methods that our two classes are going to have to implement. So here is the circle class. A circle should have some kind of a center, an x and y position, and also a radius. I have two constructors in my constructor chain. I've got a default constructor which initializes all three values to zero. And I have a constructor which will initialize the center and radius to whatever value that I desire. I've got the area method which is part of the shape interface. In other words, what this interface guarantees is that any shape should be able to calculate its own area, should be able to draw itself using a pen interface, should be able to yield its x and y coordinates, should be able to move, we should be able to stretch a shape, and the shape should also be able to print out its state information via a string. So this circle has the ability to calculate its own area. Right now there's no implementation given yet to the draw, <coughs> to the draw method, we'll get to that. It returns its x and y coordinates. It moves to a new location, so this part isn't going to draw anything to the screen, it's just going to move it to a new location. The stretch by will increase the radius by this given factor. And then the string output, the state information will release the fact that it's a circle. It'll tell me what the radius is, the x and y position, and it will even output the area. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's give an implementation now to the draw method. What should happen in the draw method? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a temporary <coughs> variable called side, which is going to be 2 times pi times the radius. So that's the circumference of a circle. But then I'm going to divide by 120 degrees. And so what that's going to do is it's going to cut this down into a very small little segment. So when I actually draw the circle, it's actually not going to be technically a circle. It's going to be a very many-sided polygon is what it's going to boil down to. That'll fix it. All right. So <clears throat> this is actually going to be a many-sided polygon, but the sides are going to be so many that the human eye is going to perceive it as a circle. So pen p dot up. So I pick the pen up. I then move the pen to the x position plus the radius. So that's going to put it on the side of the circle. Now the y value has to be positioned at the y position minus the side length divided by 2, half the side length, if we're going to make this work. Then I set the direction. And I'm going to set the direction to 90. Now I put the pen down. And I create a for loop. So 4 integer i equals 0. i is less than 120. Remember, I divided the sides by 120. So this is going to give me a full circle. This is going to draw many, many, many sides. So 120 sides is what this is going to draw. So this is a 120-sided polygon is what this is actually going to draw. 
and then p dot turn. So it's only going to turn three degrees each time. And so there it is. There's the implementation to the draw method. Okay, everything is implemented. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go to this new class, draw circle. It's going to have a main method, finish. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say C1 draw using my P1 object. All right. Hey, there we go. Not too bad. So, all right, let's change the Y value a little bit. Let's make the X value 25, but now let's make the Y value 100. Let's keep the radius at 20. Well, there it is. Pushed it over a little bit more, too, didn't it? <laughs> Not too bad. If you zoom in on that, you get a whole series of different colors for the circle. So that's the rainbow pen at work. All right, so that is the implementation of the circle class. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create the rectangle class together. So to do that, let's go ahead and right click on Turtle Graphics. We're going to say, oh, excuse me, no, yeah, Turtle Graphics, I'm sorry, new class. This class is going to be called Rectangle. We are going to have an interface, so let's add in the interface. And the interface is going to be Turtle Graphics dot shape. <clears throat> let's add this to the list. <clears throat> Turtle Graphics dot shape. Rectangle is not going to have a main method, so let's hit finish. And now the cool thing is, notice that Ellipse auto-generates stubs for me so that I can begin implementing those methods that are part of the shape interface. So, okay, let's go to rectangle. What should a rectangle have in order to be a rectangle? Now let's create several constructors. So public rectangle Here's the default constructor that equals zero. There's my default constructor. All right, public rectangle. Uh, we're going to pass in an x position, a y, got to spell double right, x position, a y position, a height, and a width. And so there is my second constructor in my constructor chain. The area of a rectangle is simply the width times the height. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return this dot width times this dot height. And there's the area. Now, how does the draw implementation work? And that is the implementation for the draw method. All right, get x position. Well, this is going to be fairly simple. Return this dot x position. Move. To move is to put in a new location. So this dot x position equals x location, and this dot y position equals y dot location. There's the implementation for the move method. To stretch by a factor is to multiply both the height and the width by the factor. So this dot height is now multiplied by factor. And this dot width is also multiplied by factor. And then the last thing we need to do is implement the two string method. So and now what I'm going to do is return output. And there's the two-string method. So that is the full implementation of rectangle. Now I know this method is called draw circle, but for time's sake, 
going to create a rectangle. I believe the Java gods will forgive me. Hey, there we go. Looks like I gave it actually a height of 30. So let's give it a height of 50 and a width of 100. Ooh, not a thousand. No, 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 no. And there we go. There's my rectangle. All right, so this is how interfaces work. Remember, an interface is not a class. The kind of interfaces that we're going to create have no state or behavior. They're just a list of method signatures. An interface is a contract. It's a contract which says that any class that implements this interface must also implement the methods that are defined in the signatures. These methods have to have the same name, the same return type, and the same formal parameter list. All right, God bless you, wherever you are today.